name is Johnny Harris. A lot of people know me as Mad Dad, but most everybody knows me as Turkey Commander. And I am going to teach you how to build a redneck turkey call. That's right, a redneck turkey call. Did you see that? I'm going to get you. Them jokers are sneaky. you got to keep your eyes out for them. When I was a youngin' back in Pine Mountain, Georgia, if we wanted to go turkey hunting, we couldn't afford to buy no turkey call, so we had to make our own turkey call. Only way we had to make a living was selling moonshine liquor, and those revenuers stopped all of that. Did you see that? I'm gonna get you! You keep messing around, I'm gonna nail him. Now, unlike them rednecks down there at Duck Travesty, they making a million dollars selling you duck collars. I am going to teach you how to make your own redneck turkey call. That's right. And if you make your own redneck turkey call, there will be a feeling of accomplishment when you call in one of them great big gobblers. You know what I'm talking about? Now, to build a redneck turkey call, all you got to do, you need four tools to do it. Number one, you need a hammer, you need a saw, and you need a redneck pocket knife, if you know what I'm talking about. And you need a bottle of Kentucky whiskey. Now, I'm going to tell you what that's for. Ah, damn, that'll help you build a turkey call, bro. Now, the next time you're driving around them backwoods roads, you look out there in that cow pasture and you look and you find an old dead cow that's been laying there for about three years. And this is what it looks like. Then all you gotta do is snatch the horn off of it. I bet you didn't know that, did you? Then all you take to do is take this horn. No, that ain't gonna work. That's a joke, you dang fool. But now, if you'll notice, this horn's holler. So what you do is you take your hacksaw and you cut it in three pieces like this. Then you take the middle piece and it'll look like this. This is one I already cut for movie purposes, if you know what I'm talking about. Now, if you'll notice, it's got a big end in it and it's got a little end in it. Now we're starting our redneck turkey call. Then the next thing you do, you go down to one of them building supply places and they got stones for like brick fireplaces and stone patios. And you walk around and you find you a little old flat rock. Kind of looks like this. Now what you can do is you can take this and lay it on a piece of concrete and scrub it like that and it'll make a flat side to it. As long as it's flat, it don't matter. You can use any kind of old rock as long as it's kind of flat, if you know what I'm talking about. Now you take your hammer. Did you hear that? I'm going to get that. you got to watch them jokers. They'll sneak up on you. I'm going to get that joker. He keeps messing around. Now you take your hammer and you chip around that rock like this until you get it about the size of a silver dollar. Then you take your ear horn, your uh, cow horn that you had here, and you stick it in the big end, and then you take your hammer, and you tap it in like that. And then what happens, it'll wedge inside of that horn, if you know what I'm talking about. Now, I already got one in here, so if you look in there, you'll see that rock is stuck in there. Now you got your redneck turkey call half made. 
Now what you got to do, you go out to the woods around your house and you pull out a loblolly bay or a cypress tree or a cedar tree, it don't matter, and you just grab an old tree like this. And then you take your redneck pocket knife and you just start whittling it down. Then what you do, you cut your stick about eight inches long and you whittle it down. Now if you notice, I must have been thinking about Betty Lou when I made this one. <laughs> But you can whittle it any shape you want. And you make it about eight inches long. And now you got your part of your turkey call. Then what you do is you go into the house. You go into the house and you grab an ear of corn that your wife has been gnawing on. And she's sitting there gnawing on that ear of corn and she's eating all the kernels off of it. You grab it and you snatch it out of her mouth. You go out and you lay it in the woods for about three days. And when you get done, you got a corn cob that looks kind of something like this. Now, what you do is you take your stick. Every time I look at it, I think about Betty Lou. You take your stick and you just shove it in the end of that corn cob like that. Now you got your redneck turkey call. That's all you got to do. Now you take your horn that you made, you hold it in the middle like this, and then you take your corn cob with your stick that you whittled down, and you make a sound that sounds like a turkey, and it'll sound like this. <coughs> Hi, dog boy. Now I showed you how to make a redneck turkey call. That's all you got to do. Now, what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you how to make another redneck turkey call. And it's easier than this one. But the main thing about this redneck turkey call, got to get something to refresh my memory here. To make this redneck turkey call, what you need is a turkey wing. So next Thanksgiving or Christmas, when they're cooking a great big old turkey, you run in there and you grab the wing off of it and you snatch it off of that breast. No, I ain't talking about Betty Lou's breast. I'm talking about the turkey breast. And you take that turkey wing, now you're starting to make you a real redneck turkey call made out of a real turkey. Now, I don't have a turkey wing here, but I got a chicken wing. And this is what that turkey wing will look like, except it'll probably be in a bigger size, if you know what I'm talking about. And all you got to do is eat all the good stuff off the turkey wing. And you pull it apart like this. Now, if you'll notice on this baby turkey wing, let me, let me chase that with something good. Here. Now, on this baby turkey wing, you got three pieces. Now, in the first piece, when you get all the meat chewed off of it, you'll have a piece of bone that looks like this. That's this piece here, okay? Then when you take the meat off of the middle piece, do you hear that? I think they know I am building a turkey call, a redneck turkey call. I'm going to get that joker. The only problem is, if I shoot him with this Ithaca that I've had for a few years, this joker shoots a three and a half inch magnum shell. And the only problem with it is, whenever you shoot it, the muzzle blast will suck all the squirrels right out of the tree. You know what I'm talking about? So you got to be careful when you shoot them turkeys at a distance. You need to wear a helmet just to protect you from the squirrels. Turkey call. Now, in this middle piece here, if you'll notice, there'll be two bones and they look like this. Now what you do is you take your saw and you cut the ends off of each one of them bones once they've dried out in the sun. You just lay them out on the porch or something or in your rocking chair and you cut the ends off and they'll be dried out. When they dried out, they'll be holler. And you take this original piece, the one that's closest to the breast, not Betty Lou's breast, I'm talking about doggone turkey breast, you cut this end off right here, and when it dries out, it'll be holler. Now, in this third piece here, there'll be another bone, and it'll look like this. And what you do with this bone is you cut the ends off of it, and after it's laid out on the rocking chair, it'll be holler too. So what you do, get me another shot of uh, memory here. Damn, that'll knock your hat in the creek. 
I think that's some of that Pine Mountain, Georgia stuff. Then what you do, you take this first bone, and you take the second bone that's holler, and you stick it down inside of there, and you glue it. Then you take the next bone out of this part here, the middle piece, which looks like this, and you cut the ends off its holler, and you stick it down in there and glue it. Then you take the third piece that comes out of this piece of the wing. I think that chicken is mad at me. Which looks like this, and you cut the ends off it, and you stick it down in the end of that and glue it. Then you got your turkey call. And when you're all done, you got a turkey call that looks like this. Now, this is the first bone that I showed you next to the breast. And it's all glued together with the four bones out of the wing. And if you'll notice, once it dries out, it's got a hole in it. That's right. They're hollow when they dry out. And you glue them together. And you now have a turkey call made out of a real turkey. You made it out of his wing. Now, this is the cool part. To make this turkey collar work, you have to pucker up like you're going to give Betty Lou a big old kiss like this. And then you suck like you kissing her, like you trying to suck her brain out of her ear. And you go, and that's how you make this thing work. And it works good. It'll call in a gobbler for 5,000 yards. Now, this is how it works. Hot dog. That is cool, ain't it? And that's all you got to do to build a redneck turkey call. Now, if you want more information on how to build a redneck turkey call, all you got to do is dial 555-SUCKER. That's 555-S-U-C-K-H-E-R. But remember, if you ask for Betty Lou, it costs you $9 a minute. Now, don't forget, when you get up in the morning, if you're going turkey hunting, don't forget to put on your britches before you take off. I'm going to go turkey hunting now.